you and your partner are sent to an MVA at the intersection of two highways. When you arrive, you find a newish SUV that crashed in the median side wire barrier, taking out four or five of the metal posts. The impact seems to have snagged the left front of the SUV and spun it to face oncoming traffic. There's about a foot of left front damage, and the sheet metal flexing means the driver's door won't easily open. The airbag's deployed, but the windshield, steering wheel, and dash are all intact. None of the damage extends into the passenger compartment. The only occupant is a 60-year-old female driver. She was seat belted and has no complaints. Your detailed physical exam yields no indication of injury. The driver is oriented with decision-making capacity, but she doesn't remember what caused the accident. She states that she remembers leaving lunch with a friend and remembers facing the wrong way on the highway with steam coming out of her crunched up hood. There's nothing between those two memories though. Why did she crash? I'm angry Bell and this is pre-hospital wisdom. Uh, let's talk about single car crashes. I understand that two cars can try and occupy the same space at the same time. Drivers end up confusing each other. Things happen. I get that. But why does a car drive into a post or a tree or a parked car? What causes single vehicle accidents? There are seven reasons for single sedan smashes that you need to know. In reality, however, there's actually 10 reasons for single vehicle crashes. The seventh in alliteration with sedan and smash. We're really talking about 10 reasons that single vehicle MBAs occur, but all the S words makes it sound all snazzy. People don't bend their vehicles into a mobile objects very often. Most crashes involve two vehicles try to occupy the same space at the same time. People expect the other driver to stop or wait or not to stop or whatever, and it causes a crash. I mean, you've met your average patient, right? Or the jackhole in front of you during rush hour? Consider that they're reportedly in control of two tons of vehicle at 70 miles an hour. It shocks me that we aren't running more crashes, if I'm being honest. But single car crashes are slightly weird. People really shouldn't be driving into trees. Trees don't suddenly jump into their path. The 10 reasons for single vehicle MVAs are seizure, syncope, sudden cardiac arrest, stroke, sugar, sleep, sauce, self-deletion, hi YouTube, shit happens, and stupidity. Pretty much every reason for a single vehicle grinder is contained in those 10 reasons. The trick is to understand that number 10, stupidity, is the diagnosis of exclusion. You need to rule out, as much as you can, the other reasons for bending a vehicle around an immobile object before you roll your eyes at your patient's lack of driving ability. So in reality, this isn't a list that you have to memorize or that you should check out. What this is is a concept that there's a reason for this crash. And so we need to figure it out. We need to figure out if there's a medical cause, if there's another good reason to have this have happened. That's what I'm looking for mostly. Number one, seizure. People have seizures. Sometimes those seizures can occur when they're driving. This is especially true for first-time seizures because people don't know what that orange smell or the weird thing that their eyes are doing portends. So they seize and the car goes where it will. Hopefully you can identify a postictal patient enough to be suspicious of the seizure being a potential cause of the accident. Syncope. This is pretty much a big tent kind of point. There are hundreds of events and causes and conditions that can cause syncope. For our purposes, though, what we're worried about arrhythmias, vagal episodes, situational syncope, occult bleeding resulting in hypotension, and those kinds of things. These are the same big deal reasons that you work up a fainting patient for. Um, prodromal symptoms should be part of the pre-crash story. Sudden cardiac arrest. The most common reason for me to suspect sudden cardiac arrest is finding a dead guy in a crash that really shouldn't have killed him. The vehicle has a bent license plate, but there's a corpse in the driver's seat without a scratch on him. In these cases, even though it's a trauma call, sort of, I work the arrest like a medical arrest. If you suspect that the trauma didn't cause the arrest, then a medical event probably did. Work the medical arrest in those cases. It's fine. Stroke. It sucks to have a stroke, but it sucks even more to have one at highway speeds. Sugar. It sucks to be hypoglycemic, but it sucks even more to have it happen at highway speeds. By the way, the crash won't correct their blood sugar levels. Their sugar will still be low, they will still be tacky and diaphoretic, and they will still have all the other signs of hypoglycemia after the crash. Sleep. People fall asleep behind the wheel. They take long trips on boring highways at night. They also take an ambient and misjudge how long it takes to take effect. Whatever the cause, sleep can cause a crash. This is more likely at night, of course, or if the driver describes a fatiguing trip. Sauce talking about alcohol intoxication, of course, but you should also think about any other consciousness-altering substance or medication. There are a bunch of analgesics, sedative hypnotics, anxiolytics, and miscellaneous psychiatric medicines that affect driving ability. But for the most part, alcohol is the big one. 
Single car crashes result in DUIs all the time, right? Drunk people drive into stuff. Drunk people drive into parked cars and drunk people drive into ambulances and police cars parked on the highway with their lights on. But you should be able to pick up the signs of acute intoxication. Self-deletion. It's a sad thing, but um, these things happen. Self-deletion in cars happens. Shit happens. I could also call this sorry, Charlie, and then be a nicer guy. Sometimes the insurance term act of God makes sense. Consider the family that had an I-beam bridge girder fall in their car without warning. A rock that falls off of a million-year-old mountain right into your path. Freak accidents look like freak accidents, though. Freak accidents don't look like a person drove into the guardrail a little. Freak accidents kind of scare you about your own mortality. Number 10 is stupid. See my point above about your average patient being sort of in control of two tons of mobile steel. This is the diagnosis of exclusion, but it's probably the most common reason for single car MBAs. People text and drive. They change their streaming service while they're driving. They search for other stuff. They put on makeup and eat greasy burgers while driving in the snow. Hell, admit it, you probably do some of these things while driving emergently. Stupid things happen and cause single car crashes. Just make sure one of the other nine didn't cause the crash before you blame it on stupid. The same goes for the shit happens point. If you find one of the other weird reasons, you get to look like a badass. The other problem is that many of the causes will have presentations that mimic head injury or other traumatic injury. It's pretty difficult to differentiate whether a seizure caused a crash or was the result of the crash, for example. Remember to think through 10 reasons for single car crashes. You don't necessarily have to have them memorized, but think about other reasons that people become suddenly bad drivers unexpectedly. Oh, and the lady in the introduction, I couldn't figure out what caused the crash, so I picked at it and picked at it. I wouldn't let it go. After digging and digging, she finally told me that she was a narcoleptic, but she hadn't had an episode in like 10 years. I mean, granted, she ran out of her Provigil two or three days ago, but that shouldn't mean anything, right? So she quit taking her anti-narcoleptic meds and probably fell asleep. Let me know what you think of all this. You can comment or send an email to the address in the description. If you found any value at all from this, click like and subscribe. One of the most helpful things you could do, though, is to share this content with someone that you think would get something out of it. Make sure and watch another video. Subscribe to the button below, and I'm trying to hit 1,000 subscribers. I'm Angry Bill. This is Pre-Hospital Wisdom, and until next time, stay safe.